What's up YouTube? In this video I will be discussing how to process movie film, otherwise known as ENC-2. Here are some photos I've taken with movie film. I was using Kodak Vision 3 50D. The D in 50D represent daylight. Most color motion film are either daylight or tossed in balance. I remember it was a sunny day and the film music is a 50 ISO film which make it perfect to use this film at this time. I'm amazed by the latitude this film stock provides and there's something about the colors that render in motion film which I really enjoy more than C41 color negative films. Here are some examples of my favorite movies which use some or all motion film stocks in their reels. I believe it's very important to have like a physical aspect when producing a motion film. I'm happy to see a lot of films today still use film motion stocks. I believe as years pass by, digital tend to get lost quicker than to have like a physical uh, copy which you can always fall back on because at the end of the day, external hard drive does fail, but if you have physical, as long as you don't lose it, it will be with you forever. Alright, so as great as motion film is, the only thing that you just have to watch out for is the rim jet layer. Uh, that's something that you know in the beginning of the process you just want to do a quick pre-bath to really make sure it is washed off. Uh, as you see what I'm doing right now, I'm just warming up the chemistry. I'm going to get it to 106 Fahrenheit just to warm it up. And I'm also going to just attach like a list of supplies you might need just to get yourself started. Definitely just having a big bucket is will be useful because this is I'm using it as like a warm bath. I'm also going to use a sous vide. This is just going to help like heat up the uh, chemistry to get it where it needs to be. I'm going to be using QWD, their ECN-2 kit and I'm going to be developing to their films. One of these films, you see some of the photos early on in this video. Before we begin, I'm gonna put everything in the changer bag. I'm using just a standard Patterson tank and oh, just make sure you don't forget the scissors. So yeah, don't forget about the scissors. That's very important. All right, so first step, is we're going to, to check on the pre-bath. For the pre-bath, we needed to get it to about uh, 75 to 80 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to check on that right now. Uh, before I start, I'm also going to just put on some gloves before I start this, especially when you use a chemistry, uh, it's just as like bleach, you don't really want to get it on your hands. So. We're going to start with the pre-bath. You just need to leave this in for 10 seconds. After that 10 seconds, we're going to pour the pre-bath right back into that storage container. Then we're going to shake and exchange the water three times. And what you see right now is a bit of that rim jet coming out. After we've uh, exchanged the water three times, we're going to add that developer in there. The developer is going to be for three minutes. The temperature should be at 106 Fahrenheit. And the first 30 seconds, we're going to invert it. So when it inversions, as you see what I'm doing right now, it's kind of like going up and down. Next, once you complete that 30 seconds within the first minute, your next two minutes will be 15 seconds of inversion twice. I'm going to speed through a lot of this part because uh, it is a pretty long process, but you know, it takes time. So. 
one thing I would like to do as I go through this process is always just make sure to get the next chemistry ready. So we have that spot stop back on, on the side and we check the temperature for that. So we go pour out that dilo for now, we're finished with that. Uh, the stop bath now, we need it to get to like around 80 to 100 Fahrenheit. We go pour that in right now. And for this one, with the stop bath, we go invert it for the full 30 seconds. So it's, we only need to stop it for just 30 seconds and we're going to invert it uh, throughout that 30 seconds as well too. Alright, bet. So we're going to pour it back uh, in the uh, storage container now. Once our stop bath is complete, we're going to exchange water in here for three times as well too. Once we exchange the water three times, we're going to pour in our bleach. Our bleach is going to be for three minutes. The temperature should be around 80 to 100 Fahrenheit. And within that first minute, our 30 seconds is going to be inversions. And similar to the developer, after our first minute is done, the last two minutes is going to be 15 seconds of inversions twice. Alright, we're going to pour back the bleach in that storage container now. We have that fixer on the side that's um, almost ready, but before we pour in the fixer, we're going to rinse it out once again, exchange water three times as well too. After we exchange water three times, last step is the fixer. The fixer is, should be around 80 to 100 Fahrenheit. We're only going to do this for two minutes, so uh, exactly like the bleach and silver, first 30 seconds, we're going to do inversions. Then the last minute is going to be 50 seconds of inversions twice. And we're going to pour that back in the search container as well too. So the last step is just to rinse for 5 minutes. You could kind of just let it overflow a little bit if you want to. What's more important is just you want to make sure you rinse everything out. Uh, one thing to note, I'm also going to use photo flow. This is kind of like a dish soap for your film. Uh, like a little like photo bath. I'm going to just use a little bit of that just to make sure that the film is really rinsed out. After that five minutes, then you can check on your film. The main thing you just want to make sure when you look at your film is no remaining rem check that's on that film. So let's look closely more at the film. And as I mentioned before, it looks very really close to C41. The main thing we just want to make sure is no excess rem check is left on the film itself. Let's review the second row. We do see a bit of rain jet that's on the reel itself, but it's not on the film, which is good. If like there's any rim jet that's still on the film itself, you could use like a little pack pad or like a microfiber cloth. Uh, just something that's not gonna scratch up the film just to take the excess uh, rim jet off. And last step is just let that bitch dry. Thanks for watching, like or comment if you think this video was helpful. Peace.